Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts.
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, as we, your children, come into this space, in this moment, in this time, to worship and adore your holy name, we pray that your Holy Spirit will attend to our devotions today, dear God. We want to come with humble hearts before you, and we want to open ourselves up to you, dear God, and allow you to pour into us, to refresh us, to give us a word, a message, dear Heavenly Father, that we can add unto our life so that we can grow in faith. We want to acknowledge that you are the most awesome and wonderful God. You are the God who pursued each and every single one of us by giving your son, Jesus Christ, as a sacrifice, who died on a cross with arms wide open, welcoming us to come into your kingdom. Dear God, we want to thank you for the gift of Jesus. But we also want to thank you for your providence, dear God, all the ways that you continue to provide for each and every one of us. Well, we acknowledge that you are a most awesome and wonderful God and that you continue to be there for us in each and every single situation. We have to acknowledge that we haven't always been faithful to you. There are times that we have sinned, dear God, there are times that we have committed acts or failed to do acts and we, dear Heavenly Father, have not lived according to the way that you would have us live. We pray for your forgiveness, dear Heavenly Father. We pray that you will give us a spirit of repentance so we wouldn't fall into the old traps of the evil one, but rather that we will keep our eyes focused on you so that we can live lives for you, dear God. So now, dear Heavenly Father, we just want to commit this act of devotions into your hands and pray that all that we do will bring honor and glory to no other name but your name. Hear this, our prayer. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.
Our reading is taken from Exodus chapter 33, reading from verse 12 to verse 23. Here begins the reading. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before you the name of the Lord, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Here ends our reading.
Have you ever messed up big time in your life? I wondered how you would ever make things right again. Maybe you did something crappy to a friend or a loved one which caused them to justifiably be angry with you. And in your regret, you wonder how you can make amends. For most guys, when we mess up with our significant others, we have trusty apology gifts. Now, we buy these gifts usually based on the level of hurt and pain that we have caused. And these gifts can range from flowers to jewelry to a shopping spree in Miami. In our reading today, we pick up from the aftermath of a huge mess that was created by the Hebrew children, which played out in the preceding chapter of Exodus chapter 32. You see, in Exodus chapter 32, while Moses was receiving the Ten Commandments from God, the Hebrew children got impatient and begged Aaron to make an idol for them. Aaron took their gold and made it into the shape of a calf. The Hebrew children, in turn, then worshipped this idol. This infuriated God, who sent Moses back down from the mountain where he was meeting with God to deal with the Hebrew children. We see in Exodus chapter 32 that Moses ends up slaying about 3,000 of the disobedient Hebrew children who turned their back on God and worshipped the idol. After this, Moses pleaded with God to forgive the Hebrew children, but God's anger was burning hot, and God said whoever sinned against God in worshipping the idol will be blotted out of God's book. God told Moses, to go and lead the people, and that God's angel, and not God, would go before them into the promised land, and that God will punish the people. The chapter then ends with a notation that the Lord struck the people with a plague because of what they did with the calf that Aaron had made. This is where chapter 33 picks up. At the beginning of this chapter, just before our reading starts, we see that the Hebrew children were distressed because they learned that God had decided not to go with them into the promised land and that he had told Moses that the Hebrew children were a stiff-necked people and that if God was to go with them even for a moment, that God might destroy them. And what was Moses' response to this? Well, it was to pray. Moses interceded on behalf of the Hebrew children to ask that God will change God's mind and go with them into the promised land. And that is where we find our reading today. This conversation between God and Moses, this intercession. And what I find interesting coming out of this intercession found in Exodus chapter 33 are three little lessons that we can take away with us. These lessons are, one, no matter how much we have messed up, there is always redemption. Two, prayer solves all problems. And three, how awesome the glory of God is. So let's look at each of these lessons in turn. Yes, the Hebrew children had messed up. They broke the first commandment, even while God was giving it to Moses. Even after they had seen the power of God in delivering them out of Egypt, the power of God in the plagues that tormented the Egyptians, and the power of God in parting the Red Sea. Even after they experienced God, who had gone before them in a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day, 
even after they were nourished by God who provided them with manna, yet still they sinned against God when they felt all alone. They chose to turn to idols. Well, they face the consequences of their sin. We know that following Moses' intercession to God on their behalf, God was willing to forgive the Hebrew children of their sin and to go with them into the promised land. In many ways, yes, the Hebrew children had messed up big time and God's anger was seething, yet God forgave them anyway. Even though the Hebrew children had broken one of God's cardinal rules, which deeply hurt God. We see in Exodus chapter 33 that God was willing to forgive them of their sin and to go with them into the promised land. And to me, this says two things. The first thing that it says is that nothing that we do is too great for our God to forgive us. So often we think that we are so sinful, we're so horrible, that, you know, the things that we do are so unforgivable. But here it is that the Hebrew children who chose, after all they had seen, after God had worked with them and delivered them out of Egypt, they chose to turn their back on God and worship an idol. And yes, they did have to face the consequences of their actions, but God still forgave them. How much more then will God forgive us? The second thing that it says to me is that if our God can forgive us, how much more should we forgive others when they wrong us? Just food for thought. Let's move on now to our second point. Prayer solves all problems. By seeking God in prayer and by laying the people's case before God, we see that Moses was able to convince God to change God's mind and to go with the Hebrew children into the promised land. God had initially said that he wanted nothing to do with this people, that he was going to send them into the promised land with angels. But if God had gone with them, he was going to destroy them. But after Moses went to God and prayed to God, and remember that prayer is a conversation. It's a dialogue between God and the person who is praying. And certainly it was a dialogue between Moses and God. We see that God changed God's mind and decided, you know what? God was going to go with this people, his people, his chosen people, the Hebrew children, after all, into the promised land. One of the interesting things that came out in Moses' prayer, I believe, is God's response. And it's interesting to note that somewhere in Moses' prayer, Moses would have prayed that God would show Moses God's glory. And God knew that, you know what? Humans can't see the face of God and live. But yet still, God was able to find a workaround for Moses and decided to show Moses God's back. And it's kind of a reminder for us that sometimes when we pray, we pray for things that may not be good for us. But God, who knows and sees all, understands what is good for us as human beings. And so God may not permit certain things to happen because that may not be what is best for us. It's kind of like when Paul would have prayer that prayed that prayer that the thorn would be removed from his flesh and God said no because that thorn in Paul's flesh was to be a reminder of the power of God and so when we pray yes we are praying that God will act and God will do certain things in our lives but maybe just maybe God's answer to us is, there is a better way. And that is why there is a need for this dialogue, this conversation with God, as 
we pray and as we speak to God, we should listen back to hear what God says to us because maybe God might be speaking to us in the moment when we pray to say, you know what, I hear your prayer. But my answer is that I cannot grant you this prayer, at least in the way that you want it, because there is something better, some greater purpose that I'm trying to work out. We now come to our final takeaway from today's reading. And that takeaway is the awesomeness of the glory of our God. Sometimes because of our limited ability to grasp how great God is, we can think of God in human terms. However, in our reading from today, we begin to get a glimpse of how great, how big, how powerful our God is. In the fact that when Moses would have asked to see the glory of God, God had to say, no, you cannot see my face. But yet, so God provided a way for Moses to see God's glory as he suggested lifting him up into the cleft of a mountain and passing by while covering his face. And just in that image, we see the mightiness, we see the splendor, we see the awesomeness of the supernatural existence of God. And it's a reminder when we think about all that we face in this human realm, that we have a God that is greater, that is bigger, that is mightier than all we can face. It is a reminder that God is just beyond our imagination. And well, yes, no human being can see the face of God and live. We as human beings don't need to see God's face to follow God. For just like how a group of hikers follows the leader by looking at their back, so too we follow our God into the unknown towards the promised land that God has set out before us by looking upon the back of God as he goes before us into the world, into the promised land, guiding us by hope, faith, and love. So, my brothers and sisters, as we bring our reflection to a close today, I want to remind us of the wisdom that we would have been unfolding from Exodus chapter 33. And that is, no matter how much we have messed up in our lives, there is always redemption. And no matter how much someone else has hurt you, you must forgive them, just as God forgives you. Secondly, that prayer solves all problems. Just as we saw Moses interceding on behalf of the Hebrew children and how God was able to forgive them and decide to go with them into the promised land. So too, when we pray, we can get answers to all of our problems. And sometimes the answers may not be what we wish, but we know that what God does for us is for our good. Finally, we are reminded in Exodus chapter 33 that we serve an awesome, wonderful, powerful, mighty God whose supernatural existence is beyond all that we can imagine. So my brothers and sisters, as we go away from this reflection today, may you go with the power of God and know that you serve an awesome, wonderful God who seeks to forgive you who seeks to communicate with you, and who is mighty beyond our imagination. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that you have reminded us that nothing that we do can separate us from your love. Let us, too, seek to love others as we forgive them when they wrong us. Dear God, we thank you that we have the ability to communicate with you through prayer. As we speak to you, Allow us to listen and hear your response, dear God, remembering that prayer is a dialogue. And finally, dear God, we thank you that you are so awesome and so great, that your glory, dear God, is just beyond what we can imagine as human beings. We thank you that you have decided to be with us, 
to be our guide, to be the one who will take us into the promised land that you have laid before us, dear God. As we follow you, give us hearts, dear God, truly as individuals who seek to go where you lead. So, dear God, hear this our prayer. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.